columns of smoke on the horizon and this constant noise remind Pokrovsk that war is close at hand and will soon be on its doorstep. I have cats. You have to go and get them. OK, take my arm. This woman and her friend have waited three days for the volunteers to evacuate them after their building was bombed. I can't take it anymore. If I hadn't gone to yours, I would have died. Shrapnel hit my sofa. I don't know how we survived. The whole neighborhood was devastated by a hover bomb. One strike too many for this resident. Now without electricity, her phone battery dead, she has lived the last few days cut off from the world. I haven't eaten in several days now. I need to get far away from this hellhole. I don't want anything else anymore. Just when she was explaining that she was waiting for the volunteers to come and get her, a car arrived. Look, it's my brother. He's here. Her brother, worried not to have heard from her, braved the danger to come and get her. <laughs> it's going to be okay. We're going to leave here. Let's go and get your things. Don't worry. The sense of relief was short-lived as fear soon returned. Fear of the bombs. Fear too that the Russians could come to occupy their neighborhood. Here we're less than 12 kilometers from the front line. The risk is that the Russians encircle the city. This would be a disaster for Ukraine, as Pokrovsk has served as a logistical base for the Ukrainian army's eastern front throughout the war. This taxi driver can see the Russians getting closer with every passing day. Look over there. The Russians are coming from there. They have taken control of the mine. We can't access it anymore. Dima was born in Pokrovsk. He would never have imagined that his city could be taken. But in the last two days, he's lost all hope. That was just last night. Before, we were taking in refugees. Now we are the refugees. On the roads, the exodus has begun, but the evacuation will take time with 50,000 people still living in Pokrovsk.